Alrighty guys, Gunshy Mori back here with my Bob's Tall Tale review. So part two of Bob's Tall Tales of release where we get the steampunk. And yeah, so I figured I would hop in here, we'd go look over and see what all this new stuff can do and what is available. And well, I think first off here, we're going to go through the skins just because I already have them on me. So first things here, you may notice there is an aberration ghillie suit and I am fully wearing it right now you can just look at my player model and it looks awesome now I felt like on the desert ghillie suit the previous Bob's ghillie suit it just kind of felt a little bit like a retexture like, or not a retexture a recolor and they threw some cactuses and some of the plants on this feels a tiny bit still like a recolor but they definitely went more all out on changing out the plants for aberration you still notice some of these that they look like they're the original ghillie suit leaves and I which yeah you can't remove some of those because those are like the base of the ghillie suit uh, the rest of it is just overlay to make it look fancy so yeah but then also for cosmetics here we do got some other ones so we got these pants uh, hold up I actually got to remove all these skins there we go. Now my guy looks a little bit more sophisticated. And this one looks awesome. We got this nice little glove as well with the skin. Where you got all these like additional tinker stuff attached to your fingers. Um, there's only one other pair of gloves. And it's the dapper gloves. And then of course we just got the engineer shirts and all that. I mean there's not really a whole lot of uh, difference in outfits. Like there was with the... Uh, what was it? The Pioneer Pack, or Frontier Pack here. So if I quickly look in here, there's a couple set. I thought there was like, oh, I guess there only is really two. But there's a lot more gloves. You got a lot more variety of hat. There's two different chess pieces it looks like to change from from those skins. Um, and yeah. But otherwise, that's really it for the skins. We also got do got these extra hats. Um, oh, as well. Here later on, once I do get a Rock Drake, I will also show off what the Rock Drake saddle skin looks like. But there's really not a whole lot for skins in this pack. The major like thing from this drop of Bob's Tall Tales is quite literally the new structures. The new skins are, they can, uh-uh, they're trash. The new structures in this game that Bob's Tall Tale dropped, I am not going to lie. They are definitely worth buying. But they are also, if on your, you are on a PvP server, they are on the pay-to-win side. I will say that. It is definitely a pay-to-win situation here. Now, speaking of those structures here, we're going to actually start off here pretty simple with the structures. We're going to actually be starting off here with the new lighting. Now, we do got this simple light post. Next up in the line, we do got a ceiling steam light. Which looks nice, looks nice. My favorite one here thus far is the last one. We do got this wall light here, the steam wall light, which looks nice. But my favorite one here is the desk steam light. It's literally one of these globes. Remember, you, you probably recognize these where if you put your hand on it, all the electricity would go to where your hand's touching the globe. I used to have one of these and I used to love it. I did also forget to show you guys the steampunk decor. So this is the option for putting the steampunk uh, one here onto them this one here steampunk structural skin in which it doesn't look bad um i haven't got to see from the outside Ooh, outside looks kind of nice but the inside definitely looks like a fancy manner but next up here in terms of structures this one here i actually really really like so if you guys remember uh how you when you make this used to make the old uh storage shelves the large storage you had the option of making it for uh, blueprints so recipe storage well, this here is a library. Now, it is essentially the same exact thing where you can store blueprints into it, except you can link it to other structures such as the smithy over here. So if I search up a giga saddle, you will notice here that there's this little book icon over it as well, kind of integrated into it. But I have access to all the giggle saddles that are over. Did I, I said just I just said giggle saddles, giga saddles that are over in this uh, library. And yeah, it just makes accessing your blueprints a lot easier. Now, next up here for structures, we actually have the spotlight. And if I turn it on here, you'll see that we get a nice little ring. 
And if you walk up to it with a brush and just hit left click, you'll get this little menu to pop up where you can actually go in and paint your own little design on the front, if I'm correct. Um, I might be wrong. That might be the right click, right? No, the right click's my armor. Yeah, so you have to hit left click and you can come up here and you can paint your own little design on the front. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot get the command to spawn in die to work. So we are just going to skip over that part. So next up here, we actually got our first tool of the kit. And also, by the way, if you're wondering what order I'm going in, I'm actually going down the line of when these get available to you based on level. So the first thing you get like off a of level is the steam lights library, then the spotlight, then the goo gun, then this next tinker station. But yeah, anyways, we got the goo gun. Now you might be wondering how you use this. Well, if you just quickly go into it and read it, it basically tells you used harvest carcasses to create corrosive and bounce balls of goo. Okay, now all you have to do is find a corpse to harvest. And well, w oh damn it, my corpse has despawned. Okay, now that I have acquired a corpse, I know it is a north row. Uh, all you have to do is walk up to the dead body. Oop, don't bounce off of it. Don't. Don't get caught on the weird bounce physics of a modded creature because uh, the hitboxes are weird for some reason. Yeah, don't get too close to this thing. But all you have to do is hit control, and you will notice here that, boom, your goo gun is to 100%. Now, that is because it just has harvest, harvested some internal bits there from the Nerthro. And now you actually have ammo. So you will notice here that top one there, that is your corrosive option. So if I shoot this at a creature, like so, it will deal corrosive damage. And if you hit R and you like aim at the ground and now you shoot, boom, you get, if I shoot large enough, boom, oh, you get a bit of an explosive ball. You do got to aim a bit away so that way you don't pop immediately on you. But the more you shoot, the bigger the ball, the bigger the bounce. So now we're maxed out, boom, and we just get launched straight over here. I'm not even in creative mode fly, and you just get sent. So next up here for our modded, not modded, our Bob's Todd tail structures is the op I'm dumb. I almost said open tinkerer's window. Uh, this is the tinkerer's desk. Now this is our next structure up, and what this is is a nice little structure where if you have blueprints and you go into it, you can combine the blueprints to make them better. How do I? Okay, stable combined results in the quality. Oh, so if the quality, wait, what? I'm a little confused here. I think I have to have three. Okay. I should have tested this a little bit more thoroughly. If I give you a third one and let's do a stable combine. Boom. So if you give it three, it's going to start combining here and then boom, you get a different blueprint. So I guess you have multiple blueprints. You can combine them better for a chance at a better one. Yay. Yeah, I know. I, I'm still a little confused on this structure as well. It's just mostly combining blueprints. Now, next up here is something that I think a lot of people have been waiting and looking forward to for a while. Because for a long time, the only way you could get jerky is by having a preserving bin where you could run it off of spark powder. And then you had to give it oil and meat and all that just to get the jerky. Well, now with Bob's Tall Tales, you can get an industrial form preserving bin. And it works almost exactly the same as the original preserving bin, except it's faster and it runs off of gasoline. Or if you have a generator set up, it will just power that. You will still have to give it spark powder and oil. Um, it's just now it doesn't run off of the spark powder. But next up here for structures, it's starting to get a little bit more tricky. This here is a gene storage. Now, you might be wondering, where do I get genes? Like, how do I even get them? Well, that's where our next little tool comes in handy. This here is our 
primitive gene scanner. I am stupid. Why do I keep on reading the first word? This is our gene scanner. This here, we can set to track certain creatures. I haven't figured out how to set up the tracking yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. I think I have to, like, scan certain creatures, right? But as you guys can see here, looking at these direwolves, there you have two gene traits. Uh, mineral bearing and high endurance. I don't know what mineral bearing means. I'm guessing that when it's carrying stone, it has reduced weight. Ah, ah. So, with the gene scanner here, I have figured out how to track creatures. So, what you have to do is hold R and then track creature max level 16. And, well, bam. Any creature you want will pop up. Uh, let's do something that we know we'll find on this map. Hold up. Let me just search my Cosmo. Because I do have a Cosmo nearby and I got a feeling it's going to... Yep. See? Now, this guy, it's going to direct me over to my little Cosmo over here. If I'm correct. Right? Yep. No? No, wait. Hold up. Is there another Cosmo? <laughs> okay. No, there's more Cosmos nearby. They spawn over here in this green zone. But as you can see, it's trying to direct me towards the creature. Max level is 16. But now, what I can also do, if I quickly clear out my creature scanner, I think that is a option here. I just clear it out. And I run over here to my north row real quick. I can scan it. And as we can see, it's melee frail. So if I walk up to it and hit left click, I can extract the gene trait. And boom and boom. It's going to ask me, ask me if I want to make sure about this action because it is permanent. And well, bam. Now I have... Wish blah, I can't talk. Now I have extracted the gene from this north row. And as you guys can see here, this this creature has a frail melee gene. Its offspring are more likely to inherit the lower of its parents' melee stats. Okay, now that's that's epic. Um, combining that alongside uh, what are they as well? Gigaraptor feathers. Like this is gonna make breeding go insane because you know for a fact people are gonna go nuts with it. But once you have a gene stored in your gene scanner, what you can do is walk up to your gene storage, hit E, and then you can transfer it over and store it. And now you can also transfer out your other genes, and you can go over to your other creatures, such as this direwolf here. And if I'm correct, uh, how do I inject a gene? Gene transfer? I can inject a gene, right? Oh, target must be a baby. Okay, so you can inject the genes into a baby. Now, technically I wish I could just go into the next one because it would be perfect because we do have a baby that we need to inject a gene into. And our next stuff here specifically is for mammals. Um, I do want to get the robot out of the way because I figure this is our number eight on the list. It's our halfway point. The Cosmos are number 16. So, may as well do these. So, here are your little butlers. The sir, the sirs. That's what I've been calling them. I can't figure out what the next, rest of their names are. I've been calling them Sir Simmons. Uh, but, if you whistle at them, as you can see right now, they're in like a little bit of a standby mode. And they'll make a little bit of a, there you are. But if you quickly whistle at them, they will quickly pop back out. Or if you can even hit Y. And you got your little robots. Now, they have three different modes that you can do. So, as you can see, he's just set to be a follower right now. But if I set him to be a butler, he will, if I give him my inventory, he will auto-organize it for me now. And if I go over here and I set him to repairs, any damage to the base, he will go around, look, see what's damaged, and then come back to me and tell me the exact amount he needs to repair it. And then lastly here... You have the harvest option. Now, when any of your structures are at max capacity for uh, storage, such as your gas, or well, I guess technically if they really have anything in it that can be taken out, like even your crop plots, your gas collectors, stuff like that, um, it will take it out and it will harvest it for you, quote unquote, and put it into storage. And then, of course, you can also just set it to your follower mode, where this is the mode where he'll just follow you around. And as you can see, that little uh, thing that he drops breaks. Now, 
Sorry, I'm getting a little uh, blemish here. But now for our embryo incubator. Now you might be wondering, embryo incubator? So we finally got an egg incubator? No, this isn't an egg incubator. This is something that back in Ark Survival Evolved, I really, really, really wish we even had the option for. What this is, is a way so that way you can do it with mammals. You remember how uh, you could shove as many eggs as you wanted into one of these things, see what their stats are, and then just dip dispose of them if you didn't want them? You can now do that with mammals in this game. Now, I know saying that is eh, it's hard to explain. My best option here is just to show you guys. So, I got me my direwolves mating over here. And what we got to do now is just wait for them to be done. Okay, we just hit 100%. As you can see, now my dire wolf is sitting like that. And as you can see here, we can actually even see the embryo before we extract it. So if I quickly left click, right, I can hit extract embryo. And wha bam, now the embryo is stored in my gun, if I'm correct, right? I can walk over here. And we can hit B, access, and we can store... Oh, well, it's not even stored in my gun. It's stored in my inventory. And well, bam now we've dropped a dire wolf embryo into this. And as you can see here, it will show us... Well, it won't really show us the stats, but as you saw before we extracted it, it showed us the stats. This one, oh, my, my robots are following me. They're just following me around. But as you can see now, it it's hatching it like you would on a what is it called it, it's a I'm, I'm like losing my mind right now it's incubating it like an egg incubator so that way you can just pull out the ones that you want throw them in here let them incubate and then you can get the parents back to making more you know so for someone like me who was doing the genetic library in my previous series this would have been the best thing to help me speed along the ma mammals and all that I really wish that we still had the egg incubator. So next up here for our structures of the Bob's Tall Tales, this here is our clock face. Now at first you might just have thought, oh, this is a nice little clock. No. Well, it does tell the time. It also has the power to manipulate time for structures. Now that you might be going, huh? Really what that means is that if I quickly turn it on or off here, uh, it will basically enable boosts for stuff. So, as you can see here, I got a bunch of my forges. This just increases how fast they do, how fast uh, they do stuff, you know? It's kind of like the stopwatch there. It's just another thing that manipulates time. So, next up on my list here for things that get unlocked, we actually have the Zeppelin. Now, there is one thing I got to say about the Zeppelin. It's nice. It's just that it's 100% the text gift, just with some stuff stripped, and now it runs off of gasoline. I'm not joking. It It's like 100%. Boom, we'll kick everything on. Boom, we're flying. It's quite literally like the text gift. It's like a boat. I, I'll hit shift, we'll descend. Or I'll hit, uh, was it C, we'll descend, right? Space bar will... Uh, oh, hold up. No, space bar won't get us up. We actually have to face up and to go up. Because space bar actually tries and lands us. So I think to go vertical, I have to go V or is it X? Yep, you have to hold X to go up. So there's not really much about this that I have to say. It's quite literally, to me, just a different reskin of the text gift. Just now it runs off of gasoline. And of course you can build on it. I mean, it has a really nice design. Um, I was just kind of accept, like expecting a bit of a bigger airship. I think that's why I'm really uh, kind of disappointed with this. Is just because I got my expectations over the top for them. Because I really wanted a big airship base, you know. Because um, there used to be a mod back in the day. A lot of people remember it. The old steampunk mod had a massive airship that I loved. And yeah, they that's what I thought that they were going to be adding in. But no. But not a whole lot there for the airship. It's legit. Just like a raft or a tech skift. 
except it runs off of gasoline and you can fly it up and down. Of course, you can build on it. You do got a railing so that way you don't fall off. And you do actually got some extended ladders so that way you can uh, somewhat. Is it just. Is it just going to keep going? <laughs> How long is this ladder? Is it the bottom? Is it out? Oh, good. Retract the ladder. <laughs> Just goes up rung by rung. I love that. Okay. I mean, ooh, I. Ah, there's got to be other controls that I haven't figured out for this thing yet. And I've tried a lot. And yeah, I'm not really finding a whole lot for controls. Now, next up here is something a lot of people have been, I guess, somewhat asking for. This thing here is our Steam Forge. Now, you might be going, oh great, we got another forge. I bet it's just a reskin of the Indie Forge. You'd be wrong, because I was wrong. What this is, is technically our first tech forge, because it requires element to run. And it is a lot faster than a normal Indie Forge. So, and it looks awesome. But other than that, it's really just a tech forge with a steampunk design. Now, I really, really hope somebody in the community will go through and make a bunch of like tech skins for like the time one and the embryo, like just, you know, just tech skins that are in theme of arc for these structures. Because I feel like this would, this thing's epic. And I do like the fact that it does have a little bit of a ramp that you can walk up. You know, just so that way if it's like up against two walls, because technically this is a, a two by two or is it really? It's closer to. Uh, yeah, a bit of a two by three, two, but it's taken up three spaces by the looks of it, because this is a five wide. Oh, yeah, it's taken up three spaces, so it's going to be a tight fit if you have a small base. Now, next up here, we actually have the linked storage. And this stuff is actually pretty awesome to me. So just a heads up, when you first place these things down, they have a five minute timer before they are linked together and you can access your stuff. But as you can see here, I got a stopwatch, I got a link storage, and I got element shards in here. But now if I run over here to this other storage box, I got placed down here on the far end and I access it. It has the same stuff. All right. Now, though, if I take out the little link storages there and run back to this one, uh, you guys already know what's going to happen. All right. There's no storages in there because they're in my inventory. If you've ever like played with an ender chest from Minecraft, that's the only way I can describe how this thing works is it works like an ender chest. All right. It's your own personal link storage from my understanding. So and you can only hold 50 items in it. Next up, and our last structure here is actually the Tesla coil. And well, this thing actually comes in three different modes. So let me quickly search it up. Tests. Because it like when you're setting it up, it doesn't tell you. So you got a burn, a stun, and an inflect vulnerability. So what we got in here is if you go in here and you go to change attack type, what we have is violate, which I'm feeling is the vulnerability, the bright, which is, well, I feel like the, the charge is the burn. Well, this one's the damage. And then this one's the stun. That's what I feel like, but it's hard to tell. Um, cause this thing runs off of crystal and I really, again, also have not had a whole lot of time to test this out as well. I kind of jumped into the Bob's tall tales, read everything and tested them out to best of my abilities, but I'm really not an expert yet at testing out this stuff. I'm still gonna give it a shot every time and hopefully we'll get it down. Now, lastly, the thing you guys have all been waiting for, the Cosmo, our little buddy. So first off, before we actually pick this guy up and I show you everything that he has available for him, I'm gonna show you where he spawns. Now, I use a little mod called Dur Dino Finder. If you just go into Arc Mods and search up Dur, it will pop up first thing. But as you can see here, if I search, we got all these Cosmos around. Now, all of these guys, as you can see, spawn up here in the safe zone. That's what I like to call it. I, or if you want to, the green area. They spawn up here in the green. 
Um, I'm pretty sure they will also spawn down here in the blue, but I'm thinking their best place up here is definitely up in the green. And first off, I am on single player. Sadly, I could not get my server up and running in time for the Arc Aberration launch. Or technically what it was is that the server wasn't ready to go for Aberration. No, that's not it. I couldn't launch it in Aberration because Nitratos didn't have it available. Yeah, no, that's exactly what happened. So, but yeah, as you guys can see here, the Cosmos spawned up in the green zone. There's not that many around because they're just generally spawning around where I have been. So kind of in this circle. But if you pick him up here, or before you pick him up here, actually, you can hold E. Uh, you have this option to turn on or off charge infested light. As you can see right now, it's turned on. Let's turn that off. But you can turn it back on. Now what that does is I'm pretty sure when you hit like uh, any creature that's scared of the light, it basically does the same thing as the glow pet. If I'm correct, I might be wrong. We also have threat sense on, which is awesome. Um, this is the one guy I've really not got to play with. But as you guys can see there, we did get something in our inventory. And that is actually the Cosmo Swing. Now this just, just pops into your inventory as an item. So that way you can uh, throw it on your hot bar. As you can see here, I do got my Cosmo on the shoulder. I can hold R, you can, you know, the threat sense and the charge infused webs. And the charge infused webs are just like for when he shoots at things. But if I hit four here real quick, boom, my Cosmo goes to my wrist. And he also, this is the first time I'm about to do this, allows me to swing. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, I'm so getting copywritten. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, this is awesome. Dude, dude, this is so cool. I messed up. I messed up big time. Oh no. Oh. Is there a way to go up, buddy? Uh, you have swing mode. Oh. So you have swing mode or shoot mode. So I quite literally can either be Spider-Man. It's just Spider-Man. Oh, this is awesome. I gotta go shoot something with it, at least. Alright, bring it, Spino! I gotta be able to web something up. Here. We've already seen him web up. Oh, Sarko once, yeah. I'm guessing a Sarko is just big enough. That you can web him. Oh, it does look like I webbed up the Spino as well. And it does get like this little webbing effect over. Ooh, I love that. Looks like the Spinos though is a bit different. Come on, buddy. You got this. Oh, you know what? I jumped to the Cosmo here and I forgot to review something else. So, as you guys saw there with the Cosmo, he does have a shoot option, and he does also have the swing option here. Swing option, though, I love. I really, really do love it. But, I guess, truly here, lastly, for items to show off, uh, we do have the stopwatch. Now, originally, I was going to plan on showing you guys how to tame the Cosmo, but I still have not figured that out, so... I do need to do a lot more research on that before I do that. So I'm going to give the Cosmo more of its own dedicated episode. This was just a quick overview to show you what it can do. But as you guys can see here with the stopwatch, if it says not placed right there in the middle. So if you quickly left click, boom, your portal is placed. Now, as you can see here, you can see it as this little temporal, you know, like blue line. And as you can see there, the cooldown is starting. And you can walk away from it. It really doesn't affect much. Um, it's just a timer about how long you have until you teleport back. So you can get a ways away. Um, I guess technically, if you need to swoop in and grab an artifact real quick from a cave and then teleport back to a safe area, this thing would work. And it is a little bit nerfed for PvP already. And I'm not even sure if it's available for PvP because you do actually have a cooldown there on it. So, if I hit left click now, before it runs out, boom, I teleport back. Or you can wait for it to run out and it will teleport you back. But you will have about a three minute uh, cooldown before you can place it again. 
and it will use about a third of its uh, durability per use. Alrighty guys, I think that's going to be it for now. I know this isn't the greatest uh, overview of the Bob's Tall Tales. I'm still trying to get used to these. I'm really excited though to hop out and go research the Cosmo more because my next video I'm planning on doing is the actual how to tame the Cosmo. So I will like be a very in-depth guide on everything you need. And the next thing up will be the Wiling. So yeah. Alrighty guys, so that is going to be it for this episode. So if you guys have found yourself at any point today enjoying it, please do remember to leave a like and subscribe. Also, remember to ring that notification bell so that you guys can be notified upon me posting any new videos. And yeah, this has been Gunshy Morai signing out. Yeah.